Okay, so how did the rosary develop? My understanding, yeah, just to kind of, is that maybe the monks prayed 150 psalms, yeah, and the lay people wanted to imitate that and maybe offered 150 aves over the course of a day, yeah. Where, where, if that's right or correct it if it isn't, where, when did that start? Yeah, so there's a couple other intermediate steps, mm. some of which you will find interesting, I will. some of which no, you I will want not to hear find all of it. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that the idea of rhythmic Christian prayer is a, it's a monastic thing, yeah. and you'll find this in St. John Cashin's conferences where you have this one conference where he's talking to a monk, and the monk talks about repeating, God, come to my assistance, Lord, make haste to help me. About when did he live? Uh, late 4th, early 5th century, okay. like contemporary with St. Augustine. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll find this in the East with the Hesychasm movement, mm -hmm. so repeating the Jesus prayer. So something like this is common enough, I suppose. Um, and then you're right about the early kind of medieval movement is you have monasteries are kind of consolidating in the West in about the 6th century is when the Benedictine movement kind of gets some traction. Mm -hmm. And so the monks would pray the 150 Psalms. I think at some times in the church's life, it would be like every day, and then it was made Wild. every week. And then more recently, it's been made every four weeks. Mm -hmm. You make your way through the Psalter. Um, but in order to participate fully in the monastery's life, you had to be literate and somewhat refined in your literate culture because you're, you're just dealing with Latin. And it's, yeah, it's tough. And a heavy Gothic script and these big antiphonaries mm -hmm. or these big hymnaries or whatever they're called. Um, so, keep yeah. going. Books weren't hard to come by back then. Yeah. Were hard to come by. Yeah. Exactly. And very expensive. Um, and so, yes. So it'd be, it'd be like the lay brothers in the monastery because you'd have choir monks and then you'd have non-choir monks. So men who wanted to join at some level uh, and they wanted to participate in the monastery's life, but they would typically do so by supporting it with work. Mm -hmm. um, so they wanted to have some connection with what was being done in the chapel, what was being chanted or sung in the chapel. And so they started with Our Fathers, mm -hmm. so 150 Our Fathers, mm -hmm. um, you know, Latin, Pater Noster. And so you have, in the High Middle Ages, the development of these Pater Nosters, which would be like, um, yeah, basically a chord of beads or a chord really? of knots. 150, eh? Yeah. So apparently in, in the ancient church, you know, in the patristic church, you had a practice of counting beads. Mm -hmm. And I think it's associated with the monks in Egypt. So some of these first monks like Antony of the Desert mm -hmm. or St. Pacomius, who founded mm -hmm. one of the first monasteries. But they were free beads that you would just like move from one pocket to another yeah. as you made your way through the 150 Psalms. And then someone had an idea. Let's put them together. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. glorious. And I was yeah. reading something that was saying that you have guilds of paternoster makers in the 13th century testified to in public chronicles oh. so it's like there were people who part of their kind of pious devout acts were to make these these things interesting um so then it's really do you know, we have any like paintings of them or we I so think, that we kind of got a sense of what they look like? Yeah, I don't know about the, like the these kind of rudimentary ones in the mm. 13th century, but by the 15th, 16th century, yes. Um, a famous one, a famous example would be the image of St. Dominic painted by Caravaggio, yeah. who has, it looks like he's handing out rosaries like party favors. <laughs> it's not exactly clear what's going on in that image, but it's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and then, so the then the organization of the rosary takes some time, and it's largely associated with Carthusians. So I want to say it's in the 14th century that a Carthusian named Henry of someplace, um, that he started like grouping in 10 and then putting in an Our Father in front of these. So at this point, they're the Hail Mary. Ah, yeah. So at this point, they're the Hail Marys. And that was like 11th century. I think Peter Damien, St. Peter Damien. Do you know why it switched? Um, I, th I don't. No, I don't know the reason for which it switched, but it moved to... So I think that like in the monasteries, you had a conscious effort to arrange the Psalms in conversation with the gospel. Because the idea was that the Psalms speak of Christ. That's something that's solemnly defined in one of the early ecumenical councils. Mm. It's that... That's why we pray the psalmody, um, because it's sung prayer which speaks or testifies to Christ, the Christ who is to come at the time of the composition. Um, and so you would have, like the monks would would interpolate little verses from the Gospels when, when reading through the Psalms or when singing through the Psalms as a way to kind of put those texts in conversation. Mm -hmm. So that's a kind of rudimentary way of meditating on the mysteries, as it were. And so I think that, um, yeah, 11th century, this idea that Mary and Jesus' life are so obviously bound up together that, that that was a move that you could make. Why you made it, I don't know. But I read, yeah, 11th century, St. Peter Damon was the first to do so. Um, Another maybe annoying question. When was it called the rosary and what does that mean? Yeah, so I've, I've heard it referred to the rosary in the high middle ages. I, I want to say as like early as the 11th century. Rosarium just means 
you know, like a basically a rose garden. Okay. Um, but that it's referred to like this string of beads. Oh. It's referred to a rosary as in the 16th century. I want to say in like 1597 is the first publicly testified, you know, use of it in that precise way. Interesting. Because up until that, it's still been called Potter Nosters, and then maybe there was some intermediate term. I don't if you know. want me to stop interrupting, no, you tell, tell me to. But I, so you said that's the 16th century. Aquinas is in the 13th century. Yeah. Was he praying the rosary? So he might have been praying something like the rosary, but not the rosary that we pray today, it doesn't seem. Um, so so I think it's returning to the Carthusians. You have Henry and then you have Dominic, Dominic of Prussia specifically. The first comes in the 14th century. The second comes in the 15th century. And they're the ones that really divide it into, so 150 becomes 15 sets of 10. They're the ones that you know put in, or it seems, testify to the fact that that an Our Father has been put in. And they're the ones that also kind of organize the meditations a little more mm. uh, because it used to be that you had a meditation for each bead that was kind of hard to keep in track of uh, so, or to keep track of. So then they proposed certain meditations for groups of 10 and ah. that's what kind of consolidated into the mysteries. And that's still that's still a very potent tradition in Germany, wherever you say the the Hail Mary, you add at the yeah. end of the first half, you know, the particular mystery on what you're meditating. So you insert those words like Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Who, who became is, incarnate. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Um, Louis de Montfort talks about this. We're probably not out there, there yet, but oh, cool. we're probably not in this history line at, at when is he, 17th century? I'm not he's, sure, yes, 18th, yes, 17th, 18th. I think he's ordained like right around 1700. Yeah. I, I keep going. Oh, yeah. Um, so that's like, I think that's the basic shape. But then uh, it's after the Council of Trent, Pope St. Pius V, who was a Dominican, publishes mm. uh, a bowl or he publishes a document which kind of states what the rosary is. And that's what's explained in the Catechism of the Council of Trent. And that's like the rosary as we have it or, you know, the rosary in its rough contours. Mm. Our Father, Hail Mary, Glory Bees, Excellent. 15, you know, organized into three sets of Excellent. mysteries. Excellent. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Before you go, do us a favor, leave a comment, let us know what you thought of the video, like, and subscribe.